Hello and welcome. Today, before we get started with spinning, I just had to do a little show and tell of some of the things that have been coming off. So, one of the things that I'd like to show was one of the weavings that I did. This is a small sample that is a straight draw uh, eight shaft uh, pattern with all of my hand spun and I did this as a sample because I'd like to do a larger one and I wanted to see how a little bit of both tight weaving and loose weaving after washing and fulling would react. So this was a real, I think this is a real successful piece. I, I really like how it came out and I really like this was kind of unexpected. It has kind of a dual sided you know, more blue on this side and more white on this side. So it's it's a really nice pattern and I like the way it shows off the hands the qualities of the hand spun and it's really nice and soft. And really quite thin. So it'll be a nice thin blanket, which is what I was planning for. I have some leftover of the singles. So this was the wool singles that I was using for weft and I was really happy with this. I'm going to probably use this for another project, but this was, you know, just some, it was a great, the sample was a great way to practice my, my consistency for spinning. And I got to use a great little loom that has actually no tie-up, and so I got to kind of translate the number of heddles into the tie-up and then the sequence, so it's a really sweet loom to use. My last item of show and tell is my tactical distaff for Sliver. So this is a you know mill spec tactical distaff. It's just a four braided and knotted piece of paracord. And you wrap Sliver around there and I'll let you know how my mill spec tactical distaff works in a later video. And so without much further ado, let's get to spinning. Today we're going to be spinning just a little bit of cotton. This is kind of a challenge. I've been doing a little bit of practice with it. So this is probably a day or two of practice with this fiber, which isn't that much. But I like to kind of start off slowly. And this is a sh very short draft. This is very short short staple cotton. I would say it's a staple length of somewhere between half an inch and one centimeter. And I'm hoping the camera's getting this because you have to really short draft this stuff. And I have to spin this stuff really slowly because I will lose it very easily. And the Phoenix's light take up really is an advantage for spinning something that's a challenge like this, which like this cotton. And I, this is I'd like to get some other cotton with longer staple length to try because as much as this is working, this is kind of a job. And the short draft, there's, and you can see there's some garbage in there that's really hard to comb out because it is just, the cotton fibers are so small and then they get wedged in there and see I've lost it. So, yeah. It's really hard. You can long draw this stuff, and I'll try that, but it takes a bit more of speed and practice than I've had with this stuff. But as you can see, when you just start off, it's better just to, at least for me, it was better just to try a little short draft. And I'm broken up. So. That's how this goes. Spinning with a new fiber is a challenge for everyone, trust me. And then also can be a challenge of finding the end. So, having really strong take up that will wind it very tightly sometimes can be. 
booger. My coffee still isn't kicking in, so my fingers are a little bit. Feeling the fat fingers, as I say. Not nimble yet. So let's see if I can get this piece. Of, yeah, so this little piece of bark or whatever. This stuff is full of that. So okay, let's start. That. And if you see something else flopping around on the bottom there, I have a couple leaders that... I like to use leaders for the specific type of fiber that I'm spinning. So I have a wool leader and I have another larger cotton leader. And then I'll just leave some hand spun around to, as leaders for different types of fibers that I'm spinning. So when I was spinning linen, I'll have a linen leader. And I just find it's a little bit nicer to have a leader with the same, because I used to just use cotton twine. And cotton twine works, but I find that the first few yards with it could be kind of inconsistent. So, a leader with the specific fiber that you're spinning. I just, which just for me helped me with the first couple. So now you can see I'm spinning rather fine here and I'm trying to struggle to get more in the draft. So I'll just grip it, start again and see if I can get more. I'm probably mashing it. And I broke it. So I'm probably getting too close to the orifice and not getting enough twist in there. And that's probably okay. So. so yeah, when I'm spinning too, I kind of think about, you know, why did that, you know, and really when I'm doing just about anything, I try to think. You know, when things go right, why are things going right? And when things aren't going so right, why? So, yeah, there, you know, not enough twist. So, from what I know, the trick to curing not enough twist is just move back a little bit from the orifice. See, we didn't twist that part enough, so that just came apart in gossamer fashion. Okay, so looks like we have a big under twisted section that we'll just have to remove. And I did this cotton last because I, or not last, but I have some more fibers to practice with. We're going to be doing some alpaca, some mohair, hopefully some hemp too. And then I'd like to do some different preparations of flax as well. But 
this cotton is quite a challenge. So. So I'm going to try to keep back, draw back a little bit more. That's kind of my method is I use my pinky and third finger to try to... Uh, yeah, this is frustrating. This is learning. I mean, there's no substitute for just getting time in with experience with the fiber. And plant fibers are very tricky. So. And I. So once you hit a stride with the Phoenix, you don't really have to stop that much, but and I'd really, with something that I'm comfortable spinning, like wool, and getting more comfortable, like with flax, I'm finding that I just don't stop for hours. Something new like cotton, which you get a lot of breakage, I'm stopping a lot because I'm fixing a lot of under-twisted sections. A lot of sm two small sections. So. flopping around. Somehow the scissors have disappeared. So. I think scissors hide with the extra coat hangers on the bottom of the closet floor. That's my theory. And the old socks that get lost in the dryer. Not let it get so thin. Try to keep it consistent and just a, maybe um let's see that's getting too thin. Maybe a millimeter in diameter. A sixteenth of an inch or something. And see I see I'm getting get these little bits of garbage that then are really hard to accommodate for in the draft. So be really gingerly with your pressure. And this is where the Phoenix really shines. It's got a really ginger take up. It's really mild so you can but it's constant so as soon as you want to let go, it gives just the 
a really mild amount of tension and will make the yarn go away, which is really what you want. Even when you're going slow like this, which is really makes it easier to experiment like this with a challenging fiber and a challenging preparation. This is I haven't combed this, and actually it probably would be an easier time if I gave it just a little bit more of a pre, a little bit more of a preparation, like maybe a, maybe a little bit of comb, and maybe spinning, maybe drafting from a comb, which is one method for drafting and spinning very short staple fibers. So there's my very slow spinning of some cotton. And like I've said in many videos, don't judge the machine on my skills. This is a hand spinning tool and a much more seasoned cotton spinner would be able to go much faster and be producing much more even yarn than I'm producing here. But the fact that this is even possible I think speaks a lot for the capabilities of this motor spinner because Any spinner will tell you new fibers are a challenge and plant fibers are just have a very different and particular feel compared to wool and other animal fibers. So they can be a real challenge for when you're starting off with them. And also no to the take up. I'm trying to build as much of I'm trying to do this wrong and not change hooks so it will build a big bump. That's wrong for many reasons, but one of the reasons is it'll it will change your apparent take up. Because as the bump grows, the amount of wind on for the strip for the swept area of the yarn storage on the bobbin increases. So with each spin you can store more yarn on that bump. And that in turn increases the take up. And that's kind of the genius of the double drive system is that it's self-regulating and that the more the bobbin will pull, the more it can slip. So your adjustment of slip is also a really big part of the equation for a really nice mild take up like this, which is just a joy to spin on. Even, like I'm saying, this is a challenging fiber and this is requiring a lot of my mental effort. Spinning something like wool is, you know, almost auto, you almost go on autopilot and you just kind of watch the yarn go into the orifice. It's pretty cool, but this is taking a lot of my mental facilities and having a nice consistent wheel. I'm not thinking about the wheel. I'm just thinking about how this drafting which I think is a great, it's been great for me in kind of relearning how to spin for speed and consistency. And I'm getting too small. Did I lose it? No. The take up can be so light, sometimes I'm wondering if 
you can feel it just be very light, and you wonder if you lose it. Please. Still getting this too small. And as you see, I'm almost to the end of this little pile of fluff that I picked up. And I haven't gotten a break in a good. This is a problem. When staple length, when the when the bit is longer than the staple length, that that is a place of weakness. So I always try to get if. The bit of fluff is longer than the staple, and I always try to fix it. If it's smaller, or you can see that there's enough twist through the structure of the center, it's kind of a... I'm getting too small again. I'm talking in that. This is the thing with new fibers. You've got to really... Devote all of your here. We'll try a draft here. Along. See if I get a break. Every time I tried this before, I would break. So this is just. And this isn't what. So if I was by myself, I would probably try dialing up the speed right now, and then I would probably lose it, and then I'd probably get frustrated and probably slow down again. So I'm probably going to try just spinning slowly with this for a while until this gets really comfortable and almost automatic. And then I'll try spinning faster. So. I just do the, these little spinning demonstrations just to, to kind of show the capabilities of this great little machine and how much fun I have with it doing things that maybe are not too common. I don't know, I, I don't see many people spinning cotton on their motor spinners. I just think it's cool to be able to do the widest range of things possible with your tools. And really the feel for this with spinning wool, it's for hard things it's makes them possible and easy things are just so easy. So I'll finish this up and that'll be the end of the video. So I'd really like to thank you guys for joining me as we go through a little bit of spinning on the Phoenix.
and what a fitting end. Still getting the hang of it, so again, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Until then, keep on treadling.